Welcome to this session friends, my name is Yogesh. In this session we are going to discuss on uh, installing and configuring Red Hat iSCSI initiator on Red Hat Enterprise Linux or CentOS release 7. So little bit about iSCSI, iSCSI stands for Internet Small Computer System Interface which works on top of TCP and allows SCSI commands to be sent end-to-end -end over LAN, WAN or Internet. So why we need to use iSCSI? Okay, couple of scenarios which I can think of, uh, let's say on your server you don't have empty slots to host or uh, for your uh, SCSI drives or SAS drives. That's a first scenario. Second scenario I can think of, you have very small setup and you don't have FC connectivity or you don't have FC ports on your server. Third scenario I can think of, you can't use NFS, your application or database is not uh, supported on NFS. So these three scenarios I can think of. When you use iSCSI, the iSCSI volumes, they appear like they are attached locally to your system. So that's a benefit of iSCSI friends. Um, in this lab setup, I got two servers. First server is 90.10.10.10, which is running on FreeBSD and uh, that's an open source FreeNAS software I'm using. This particular server will act as iSCSI server or you can say iSCSI target. I'm repeating iSCSI target or iSCSI server, they are same term. And next server 90.10.10.20 which is running on uh, CentOS 7 or you can say Red Hat. This server will act as iSCSI initiator. iSCSI initiator and uh, you can say iSCSI client, they are interrelated terms. So when I say initiator or client, so they are same. So to friends, uh, let me show you my iSCSI server setup. I'm using FreeBSD. This is IP 90.10.10.10. This one. This is running on FreeBSD. It got two drives which are on VMware because this is running on VMware. My iSCSI server. Both drives are of 8 gig capacity. 8 gig here. 8 gig here. And in services, let me show you iSCSI configuration which I recently performed. So this is the base name. You must know the base name if you want to connect to iSCSI server. So this is the identifier for this particular iSCSI server. In case your storage team is managing, you can ask them what is iSCSI target base name so they can share that information. And in target, I got uh, two drives, disk 0, disk 1. And they, they, I can connect to these drives uh, using iSCSI commands on my iSCSI initiator. So friends, this was my setup. So let's begin on technical session now. If you can see on my screen, uh, I'm already logged on to my server. This is on Enterprise Linux 7. You can say RHEL or CentOS, but if you want, I can show you my Red Hat release also. This is CentOS, CentOS 7.2. First thing which I have to do, I have to install iSCSI initiator utilities. They are not installed by default. I'm using yum install iSCSI initiator utils minus y, y for yes. So this packages will be downloaded from CentOS default repository. Okay, so installation is complete. Next thing I have to do, I have to modify iSCSI initiator configuration files. Friends, file is vim etc iSCSI initiator dot SCSI initiator name dot SCSI. This got one default entry. I'm getting rid of this entry. I don't want this dummy entry. Escape I. I'm adding my new entry now. So here entry looks like this initiator name that's uh, to define initiator name. And this particular bit is the base name which we just uh, saw in uh, FreeNAS web page that I have to use this particular base name. 
in case of uh, your setup you can get it from your storage team this is the random bit you can put anything here so it's uh, not hard coded you can put application group db group or uh, dmz or your internet so whatever you want to put as per your grouping it's up to you i'm saving this file okay let me show you how many disks are connected to my server now i can use lsblk command minus minus kazi if you see right now only one drive is connected which is sda sr0 is my cd rom virtual cd rom so as of now i got only one drive next thing friends i have to do i have to run discovery iskazi discovery so to, to run discovery i will use iskazi adm command then minus m is mode so mode is discovery mode this recovery okay then minus t is for target target is st st means send targets then minus p is for uh, specifying scuzzy targets and uh, port 90.10.10.10 this is ip of my iscuzzy server or you can say iscuzzy target server then again i have to repeat this ip followed by port so this will connect on port 3260 comma 1 that's a format without space then here i have to specify my iscuzzy target name which i just entered in uh, initiator name dot scuzzy file okay now pressing enter here so now iscuzzy discovered these true volumes disk 0 and disk 1 if you remember these drives here disk 0 and disk 1 so they are appearing on my linux system okay so friends discovery is done but let me show you ls bl blk now if you see these devices are not updated here why because i have to start my iscuzzy service till now i have only discovered them but if i want to attach them i have to enable my iscuzzy service enable and start not only enable so let me enable it and start it system ctl this is red hat 7 if you are running on red hat 6 same command serve, just use service iscuzzy start and check config uh, iscuzzy on here i am using system ctl system ctl enable iscuzzy dot service i am always typing enable not sure why enable iscuzzy dot service now i am starting the service service is getting started now okay so let's verify status of the service this should be running because it not thrown any error okay service is running here and it's enabled for next time next reboot if you want to see what are the devices discovered you can run uh, grep minus i iscuzzy from uh, your var log messages file till it to 10 entries you see iscuzzy discovery was successful and uh, these were the devices which were discovered in discovery so iscuzzy when we started iscuzzy service it uh, can log in and uh, scan the drives okay so friends let's run lsblk command again if you see here these are the two new drives which just appeared these are from free bsd which is our free nas software and uh, transport is iscuzzy transport so these are the two drives friends i am highlighting so you can easily see and if you want to use these drives uh, that's not in uh, that's not in scope of this video but if you want to use them it will take 1 minute to configure let me show you how can easily add them into vg i am uh, using pv create on dev stb is the first drive and stc is the second drive okay so they are at now do vg create iscuzzy vg it's up to you what vg name you want to use i'm just doing it for testing okay now let's create volume lv create minus l 100% free then minus name i am using it iscuzzy lv 
then followed by VG name. This is my VG name, my SCSI VG. Enter. So volume is created MKFS dot XFS. I'm creating XFS file system on this one. Dev mapper iSCSI. Okay, XFS. So and let me create one dummy directory also iSCSI file system or iSCSI is okay. So let me mount it now. Mount this particular file system on this mount point. DF minus H. Okay, friends, if you see, this is the 16 GB file system created. As I discussed in uh, free NAS page, we got two SCSI drives of 8 GB each. So now 16 GB, and uh, this is on iSCSI. So, friends, that's the beauty of iSCSI. And uh, if you run F disk, if you see, these drives are appearing as physical drives. Basically, these are iSCSI drives, but they are appearing. So that's the beauty of iSCSI. That's up to you if you want to use this particular iSCSI protocol devices. So that's very easy and very handy. And thanks for watching this video. If you have any question or any suggestion, you can post your comment on my YouTube channel. Thanks a lot, friends.